important topic of creativity. Um, I'm Joel Brandt. I'm a researcher at uh, Adobe Research. Um, anyway, uh, let's let's get started. Uh, so our first first speaker is Jun Shing, um, and uh, one important thing to know about Jun is he is uh, about to graduate and looking for positions, both academic and industry research positions. Uh, broadly speaking, in the graphics and HCI space. Um, and he's also interested in postdocs, so uh, as you see his exciting talk, think about how he might fit into your group and uh, talk to him afterwards. Uh, thanks a lot. Take it away. Thanks for the introduction, and thanks for coming, everyone. My name is Jun Xing from University of Hong Kong. Uh, my topic today is called Energy Brushes for Sketching Special Effects Animations. This work is done with Rupert, Tovey, Yosh, and George from Autodesk and my supervisor, Li Yi, from Hong Kong University. Uh, Hydro special effects, such as fire, wave, and smoke, are very important aspects of animation. These dynamic effects are created by the external forces, like wind and turbulence. Usually, these forces are not static. They are changing over time, which makes the dynamics very challenging to control and stylize. Traditional frame-by-frame -frame hand -draw animation provides full artistic control, but requires significant expertise and manual labor. On the other hand, physical simulation can create realistic effects, but can be hard to control and stylize. Sketch-based interface makes animation easy, but does not exhibit time-varying dynamics like uh, special effects animation. Here are some works of using keyframes to control and stylize the special effects animation. But it could be very tedious when the animation is very long. And here are some works of using physical simulation to produce realistic effects, but they are very hard to control and stylize. There are lots of systems that use uh, sketch-based UI to create animations, such as Motion Doodle and uh, KeySketch, and more recent works like Draco and uh, Motion Amplifies by Autodesk. However, these systems can only be used to create active and primary animations, but they are, cannot be used to create the passive and secondary animation effects. Thus, our work can be seen as an extension of this line of research. Joseph Gilland is a special effects animator who once worked at uh, Disney Animation. He has more than 30 years' experience in designing special effects animations. His book, Elemental Magic, describes the process and the technique of creating special effects animation. In particular, the technique in his book is to sketch the energy strokes that closely define the underlying forces. These energy strokes can help guide the design of more detailed special effects. As mentioned in his book, we do not animate things, we animate energy. This approach helps to simplify a complex dynamics into smaller and understandable energy sources. Inspired by this observation, we present uh, energy, interactive energy brushes to design stylized special effects. First, let me briefly introduce the basic idea of our energy brush. So here, uh, this uh, red brush is a uh, one energy brush. It can create and carry the flow particles along the gesture. Each flow particle defines a velocity field around it, as indicated by the black short lines. And these velocity fields can influence the drawing strokes nearby it to create the dynamic effect. So here is the effect. Now let me sh show you some re uh, demos to introduce our system. So by default, we provide three different types of uh, energy strokes. Uh, uh, we can just click to select one and sketch on the canvas. Each energy brush can create a flow particles that move along the gesture. And each flow particle defines a local velocity field around it. Different energy brushes have different types of uh, velocity field. They have different patterns. This velocity field can influence the drawing stroke nearby to create a dynamic effect. 
I can push this button to stop the simulation. Now let me show you how to create the dynamics with these energy brushes. First, I draw three strokes on the canvas. After drawing the strokes, I may want to add some anchors, so these strokes will not be moved away from the canvas. By default, our system automatically adds anchors to the start and end point, as indicated by the red dot. We can also add more anchors or remove the existing anchors with a simple gesture. Now we are good to animate it now. I can turn on the simulation. I can try to move the energy brushes to change its position. I can also change its direction or scale while seeing the effect updated in real time. As we can see, different energy brushes can create different patterns of effects. For example, the blue energy brush can create a smoke-like effect, and the red energy brush can create a swirl effect that rotates the strokes, and the green one can create a wind effect that blows the stroke in one direction. We can also click to select one energy brush and fine-tune its parameters. For example, I can increase power to make the effect more stronger, or increase the size to make it bigger, or increase the speed, or change the interval between the flow particles. So these parameters are all, all very intuitive to understand and control. I can also combine multiple end brushes to creating more intriguing and interesting effects. As I, we can see, as I change the position of the brush, the effect is also updated in real time. So here is the effect we just created. Besides changing the parameter of the energy brushes, we can also change the parameter of the drawing stroke. For example, I can increase the stretch constraint to make the stroke less stretched and thus have less dynamic, or reduce it to have more dynamic effect. So here is the first demo. Then let me show you the second demo to create more complicated dynamic effects, like this one. I can create different animation components at different layers. And the animation in different layers are totally separated, not influence each other. For the time reason, I will just reproduce the water and the clothes effect. For the water, I first hide this layer and create a new empty layer. First, I draw the, choose the blue color. And draw the water. And we see it has anchors at here and here, so we are good to go animate them. First, I use the wind brush to blow the water up to create a split effect in the middle. I can change its direction. Then I use the swirl brush to add some wave patterns to the water. I can click to select and change its parameters. Now I also want I can also change the rotation direction of the flow particles. For example, I can make the rotation random. Now I want to add some chaotic uh, waves on top of the water, so I make it powerful and small, and add some of the details. Now we see the wave pattern becomes more chaotic and in intriguing. We can see the water can go below the surface a bit, so we can add some wind to blow it up. So basically, we can interactively and iteratively use these energy brush to edit the dynamic effect, and we can get the real-time feedback. So here is the water demo. Then let me show you how to create the close effect. First, I hide this layer and create a new empty layer. To create the close effect, I first need to load the texture of the clothes. I can drag to change the shape and position of the clothes. Then I can use the brush to, to lasso the shape of the clothes.
Now we see it has anchors here and here, so it's fixed. However, we also want to keep the shape of the claws, such as the two sharp angles at the top of the claws. To do that, we can click this uh, rigidity brush and brush over the stroke, as indicated by the green colors. So the shape of this part will be maintained during the animation. So now we're going to animate it. Firstly, I use the wind brush to create some main motion of the clouds. As we can see, the shape of this uh, clouds is maintained. Then I want to use this swirl brush to add some turbulence. I can also add some periodic wind to the clouds. So basically, we can decompose this complicated clouds animation into some smaller and understandable sources like the man motion, the turbulence, and the periodic wind. So now we've created the claws effect. However, we see the claws is heavily stretched, so we can increase the stretch constraint to make it less stretched. We can also try to move its position to fit it better with the background image. So here is the second demo. Let me show you the last demo. But by default, we provide three different uh, energy brushes. Also, our system also provides the design tool that allows users to design their own energy brushes. To do that, we can click this button and specify the icon for the new energy brush. For example, we want to uh, design an expulsion effect. To design the new energy brush, we can simply def uh, design the velocity field of its flow particle. To design the velocity field, uh, field, we can just sketch on the canvas, and the velocity field is updated in, in the background. So now we have created an created, uh, exposing velocity field that we are exposed at the top left, uh, top left direction. However, we want the exposure to happen in different directions. To do that, we can add a more end, uh, velocity field to make it uh, explode in this direction. Similarly, we can add one more exposure direction at this one. So now we have created a velocity uh, new energy brush that has the uh, uh, exposure direction at three directions. Now let's test its effect. As we can see, the velocity field of the new flow particle will change gradually from the first one to the last one. I can try to move it out of the canvas to delete it. Now let's use the newly created energy brush to uh, design some fine burning effects. First, I choose the red color. First, I use the wind brush to simulate the buoyancy force. Then I use the uh, uh, expulsion brush to add some weak waving motions. Just have some waves to make it. Uh... Now I want to add some details of the burning to the top. So I make it uh, very strong and very small to add the details. So now we see some detail burning effect at the top. Similarly, we can add some more if burning effect at the side. So basically, we have created a very simple burning effect in this way. Now I'm going to add a more layer of the fire core. I animate it in a different layer, so they will not be influenced.
I can also turn off this dynamic feature to draw static strokes that will not be animated by the energy brush. So, of course, I can also add some periodic motions to the file, like this one. So here is the file effect we just created. So here is the three demos. Then let's go back to the slides. So in, in summary, our end brush can create the time varying dynamics like physical simulation, and it also have the easy control like a sketch-based UI. So from the design perspective, it lies between the two spectrums. Here are some results produced by our participants with our system. Our system can also create the cinematographic examples that bring life to static photos. For the future work, we want to add more effects like uh, with topology changes, like breaking and dripping. Uh, currently, our flow particle can only influence the motion of uh, uh, drawing strokes. Such influence could also be generalized, such as influence the color or scale of the drawing strokes. Uh, we also want to add some boundary controls, like to simulate the water in a container. Thank you. All right, we've got a little bit of time for questions. Well, uh, let's get our next speaker to set up as well. Um, I have one quick question while other folks are getting up. Uh, so uh, very impressive uh, and beautiful results are created with this. Uh, I, it's clear that you worked on this with, partic uh, had participants use this system. I'm curious if you can talk about their background and how learnable this was for them, um, how easy it was for them to choose the right brushes to create the effect that they were envisioning in their mind. Uh, yeah, since our system can provide the real-time feedback, if you change the end brush, it can provide very uh, real-time feedback. So uh, we did a user study, a pilot user study, and we find that even novice users without any background can uh, create very simple dynamic patterns. But uh, also we admit that our system, since we are creating the dynamics, not the kinetic uh, motion, so it's more challenging to control. So if you want to con uh, have very precise control of the effect, it is very challenging. But you can roughly create the effect, yeah, even for novice users. Great. Um, how were you able to animate the static photos? Did the user have to manually segment the parts of the photo where they wanted motion or? Yes, we need to have two layers. One background image and uh, we need to uh, segment the animated part into another layer and animate that layer, combine them two. Okay. Yeah. Did you think that the segmentation process was difficult for the user at all or um, to make it look natural, I guess? Uh, you mean this process? Uh, so to how much work did it take to get um, the motions that you generated to look natural with respect to the static image on the bottom layer uh, of the background? I think it depends on uh, how much and how intriguing you want to get. You can uh, fine tune the result until you are satisfied or just uh, accept the initial result you create. So it can be as short as uh, like three minutes or as long as uh, 10 minutes, yeah. It depends on the requirements you want. Uh, any, any brief questions remaining? Okay, thank you so much. Let's make, 